Well, good morning. I just met somebody else in my building who has a corgi and we spent the whole elevator ride talking about vacuums. It's a common theme for corgi people. There's that art again. Isn't that cool? Look at those skies. It's crazy. And back to me. I don't know what the deal is with the new place. I feel like I sleep really well. I just want to sleep more. I fall asleep earlier and when the alarm goes off, I'm like so tired. I think part of it's I have no TV. I have no Wi-Fi. I can't get distracted by computer things. <laughs> Pretty much when I'm there, I'm either unpacking or sleeping. So it's like going to some kind of retreat. Maybe that's a good thing, I don't know. Like any work I have to do, I can't do at home because I don't have a desk, I don't have Wi-Fi. I'm just there to like live and then I go elsewhere. That's kind of good, I gotta think about that. Today won't be a barn day, today will be a come home from school, deal with the cable guy day, and then I think do some moving from the old place to the new place and packing up some of my wife's stuff for I don't know, storage? I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that. I heard back from my attorney and it was basically like, don't dispose of her stuff, we can write a letter to her attorney and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so complicated. What seems so simple in terms of she left her stuff behind because she didn't want it, so I should throw it away or whatever, could potentially be so much more complicated than that. And I need to be smart and delicate because the last thing I need is to like, I don't know, get sued for throwing away stuff she left behind or whatever. Good morning again. I am off to school and I'm pretty much on time. Got good clouds today. I've got my one little time-lapse camera with me, so maybe I can get some of that going. It's been a strange couple weeks. The return to school has been awesome, and going to the barn many days has been really good for my for my head. I like this lifestyle. I'm not gonna lie, I'm having this anxiety now of like, am I gonna run out of things to talk to you about? <laughs> I hope not. I hope we can do like new interesting things, but the, the relief that has come from her moving away I don't know if you can see the sunlight on Cabrillo Monument, but it is so pretty. All right, I'm gonna go. I'll see you, I don't know, I'll talk to you when I'm driving up to get pretty veneers for my students. Um, that'll be in about three hours. So, um, from my perspective, it's three hours. From your perspective, it'll be right about, and boom, three hours has passed. <laughs> Here's why I love teaching. In my first period class, I had to show a couple videos like on how plywood is made. A couple industrial videos just on how stuff gets made, which are not always the most interesting, but they were into it. And since I had my YouTube list open, there were other videos in there, like the Jeb Corliss uh, grinding the crack video, you know, the wingsuit guy who, 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 he's amazing. Like, I just love what he does. So they're like, oh, let's watch that. And it's like a two and a half minute video. So it's like, yeah, right, I love this video. So we watched a wingsuit video as a group and it was super fun and I thought, that's great, you know, like these important little bonding moments are a are, are really big deal. We had a little bit of fun as a group and then we got back to work and it was perfectly great. And then a kid had this big case and I'm like, what's in there? And he's like, an accordion? And I was like, you play accordion? And he's like, yeah, for about a month. And I was doing some stuff and I turned back and he'd broken out the accordion and was playing accordion music and I was like, this is cool. People were gathered around him watching him play accordion and I thought, what other class can that actually happen in? People had the experience today of watching another peer play accordion in woodshop. Awesome. Somebody will remember that going forward. When I used to teach in Pennsylvania, I had a student who played bagpipes and I'll admit, I don't like the bagpipes. I just, I think I've done enough parades when I was in high school for like St. Patrick's Day and felt like I just, I'm not into the bagpipes. And he knew that, but he would come in and play the bagpipes in the wood shop and it, it just became like this thing. So an accordion today wasn't from out of left field. It was just sort of like, of course, lesser popular instruments get played in wood shop. Why not? All right, so we are off on errands to find, it's weird that she's gone and all her stuff is still there. Like I'm surprised and I'm not surprised at the same time that she just left, that she didn't deal with her mess. I can see her argument that you know, I lived in the house and she couldn't get in there to get stuff, except she could because she had keys. Here's the problem. Here's what I keep thinking about. It feels like karma in a way. When I first got together with my wife, I was living with somebody else. It was not a good breakup. I never really broke up with anybody before in my life. And I wasn't trying to be mean Without going into too much detail, I just didn't want the kind of relationship that was anymore. I wanted something that felt the way it felt with my wife. Like, passionate and exclusively loving and wonderful. And the breakup was hard because I tried to be decent and classy and, you know, 
I tried to talk it out and I tried to break up with the person I was with in the way that would be best for her. But even when it's best for somebody, it still sucks because, because it's ending. But you know, we spent days talking about it and processing it and trying to figure it out and working it out. We went on a trip together where, I mean, we were really fantastically companionate where we talked about it for days on end. I really, really tried to give as much of me to ending that relationship as I could, to be respectful to the legacy that we had, the things I'm complaining about now. But ultimately, after months, and there's some, you know, I was teaching in another state for some of that. Ultimately, it got to the point at which I just had to go. I just had to move out. And I took as much as I could, but I definitely left things behind. And I've thought about that from time to time. I left furniture behind that I made. So instead of dealing with it, I left it in that house for her to use or for her to dispose of. And I feel like if you believe in karma, I feel like that act that I did has now come back to me in terms of what my wife has done to me. She took what she wanted and left and left the rest for me to deal with. The only difference is the house is sold and needs to be cleaned out. It's not just a, a matter of having relics around to be dealt with in time. It needs to be dealt with in the next two weeks. But in principle, it feels the same. And I guess that's a little why I don't mind having to do the whole cleanup and disposal thing because, because it's karmic balance. Not that I'm a huge believer in that, but it, even if you're a little bit of a believer, it's a really easy thing to see right here. Like, hey, that thing you did at the end of the last relationship is now happening to you at the end of this relationship. My thoughts do drift to imagining her up at that barn with him setting up a new life. I really push it out of my head. You know, that it kind of comes in and then I'm like, no, stop thinking about it. You can't control your first thought, but you can control your second. My brain goes there and I'm like, no brain, stop thinking about it. And that actually works pretty well. If you sort of be strict with yourself and say, stop it, no, stop it. I'm hoping it will get easier and easier with time. It's none of my business, it's none of my concern. Anything I've done has been none of her, her concern for, for seven months. But I feel like that's partly my failing, is that there's been this seven month imbalance where I still wonder about her and still am concerned about her and she couldn't care less about me. It's not natural, but I'm improving at my not caring. What a crappy place to have to be at. To have loved somebody so intensely and have to put mental energy into not loving them and not caring about them. For your own protection, for your own well-being. I was so much happier when I could just be loving, when I could just be raw and open and natural, you know, just love because I felt love. In my mind, that was a better world. And I hope that I can feel that again. You know, I hope that I can meet somebody that I, that I trust, that I'm not too jaded to open myself up to and just have an amazing relationship with. Not force a fit because I'm feeling desperate and lonely. Just have a good thing with somebody. And everyone's like, oh, when you least expect it, when you're not looking for it. And that's annoying. You never know when something's gonna trigger you. Um, <clears throat> that song was popular when we first moved to San Diego. That was on the radio, it was all over the place. And I thought, how perfect. Because it felt like that, it did. I had a job in this amazing town, and I moved here with this amazing girl, and it was perfect. Like, it, it was, like that song would come on, and I was like, that, that is the soundtrack to my life. And it wasn't short-lived, you know? It's not like, oh, those are the best six months of my life. We got here, and we would drive to Ikea, and go buy furniture, and container store, you know? Like, we were setting up our, our lives here, listening to songs like that, and it was perfect. And it's just funny, like, it just came on. It was actually on a mix that I was listening to. Uh, and it came on and I was just like, God, I remember that time. It was such a good time. So I think that'll be a song that's forever a little um, tough to listen to. It's a reminder of what, what were really happy days. The way in which the end of that happy relationship was handled. It does me well to talk to people who knew her and who know me and who will help me reflect on the fact that it was handled so, so badly because I soften. So when people are like, no, she was terrible. She was without class. It was awful. Like, 
it, it reminds me like, oh yeah, it was. It was really, really bad. So I'm grateful for, for my friends and family for helping keep me sort of clear-headed and not, not forget the pain. Maybe I won't listen to that song for a while. I don't think I'm ready to take Coldplay back. Not that we were huge Coldplay fans. It was just such a perfect theme at a perfect time in life. It was also a time at which I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Life seemed too good and it just was like, I can't be this lucky. You know, so there were years of thinking like, you know, that other shoe's gonna drop at some point. But after a while, you sink into it and, and you, you love your life and you trust your partner and you get married and it, it's, it is your life and you are that lucky. So I don't really take her cheating on me and breaking up with me as the other shoe dropping per se. After seven years, it, it's something different. It's not, it's not like, oh, this was inevitable. I mean, maybe, but I don't feel like I let my guard down. You know, I don't feel like I was a fool and she did this. Mm, should not have listened to that song. I just feel a little like... Music has that power to bring you back to a moment and an emotion. More so than a lot of other things. I feel like music can really encapsulate and bring you back to a very particular time and place and bubble up the emotions you were feeling at that time and place. I think that's what's happening right now. It's just, I've had this strange feeling since she left, which I've tried to put into words for you. Just like, it's weird. It's weird that she's gone. It's weird that I am here now by myself, living, doing fine. Just, this is where I live. This is where I, you know, this is where my job is. This is where my friends are. This is where I'm doing life. Like the impetus to be here was because she got into law school here, but this is my home. This is where I live. This is where I want to go away from and come back to. That's awesome. But it's still strange that we started here and she left before me. You know, we didn't leave together on a new adventure. Maybe it's appropriate, but listening to that song just, I don't know what it is. Like I'm definitely choked up, right? Like I can feel it. I can feel it behind my eyes. I'm just a little like, not upset. I'm just on the verge of crying. Like I, I don't know, like I, it's, it, I don't think it's that. I think I'm just choked up right now. And I think it, it's just that really tangible reminder, palpable reminder of like, that's what it was like. That was what the happiness felt like. And that flipping song really made it kind of real for a minute. I really don't have a lot in the way of regrets. I'm pretty proud of how I've carried myself. Perhaps there were times talking to other people that I revealed too much, but at that point in time, I needed to express myself. So maybe it made it awkward for people. And you no, know, I think those are regrets that, that everybody has that you carry with you, but I'd rather express too much and make it awkward for a little bit than to not express it, bottle it up and just get sick, you know? There is a tiny feeling right now of, it's weird, I haven't had it in a long time. That flippin' song. But I have this tiny feeling of, of like, I can't believe it's my life again. That song br brought back the, the emotions of like, all those happy emotions and I'm sort of like, I can't believe this is real. Not that I'm longing for it, or pine but, but it just sort of, it made me remember the happy a little bit more potently. I'll be fine, I just need a little while. Like I kind of want to call somebody and just talk about this, but there's nothing to say, you know? Hey, I heard a song that made me feel kind of, it reminded me how it felt to be with her, uh, but I'm not with her, so I feel a little weird, and kind of sad, but not really sad, but sort of can't, believing, can't believe that this is my life again, but I'll be fine. Thanks for listening. Bye. This <laughs> uh. I joke about it a lot. <clears throat> but this one actually is my wedding song. That was hard. Um, why am I doing this to myself? I don't know. I didn't expect it. I didn't know it was on this mix. <laughs> 
think I'm going to take this one out of the CD changer, but, um, oh boy. I didn't want to turn it off. I didn't want to, I don't know. I didn't want to be disrespectful to, to that moment. I didn't want to be disrespectful to that, that moment in time, that feeling, whatever, whatever that was, the, the happiness and intensity of emotion that was when I got married and when we danced to that song. I did forget some of the lyrics that I just heard. That was hard. It was a really precious, beautiful song. And you know, we, we went over the lyrics and we talked about it and it was about, you know, there's this part about like, basically feeling like you're chained or, or frozen and then this rebirth and, and it was perfect. It was, it, I mean, still is such a lovely song. And that last line of, of your love will be safe with me. It was just, oh, it was perfect. It was, you know, we absolutely agreed like it's a, brilliant wedding song. I love it. It's perfect. And it's always been special. And honestly, I haven't listened to it in quite a while. And honestly, I probably won't listen to it again for quite a while. <sighs> it's just so strange that two people could believe so strongly in, in a song, in a moment, in a sentiment, in each other, in a life together. To just be so synchronous with somebody, I mean, it's amazing. Okay, that happened. I doubt I'll put that in the video, but who knows how we'll know each other by the time this one gets ready to get published. But that's me today. That's how I'm feeling. Just on the edge of falling apart for reasons I, I can't quite figure out yet. I'm not sure why today is hard. Is it just music? Is it that she's gone and I feel left behind? I don't really know, but it's up to me. You know, I gotta figure this one out. I will see you shortly. Thanks for hanging out, really. Well, hey, it's been a weird day, huh? I don't know what's going on with me, but uh, thank you for your patience. Here's what I learned. I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and one of the really good vacuums that like wirecutter.com was like, oh, you know, this is one of the best ones was already on sale at Bed Bath & Beyond. And then I had a 20% off coupon, which took more money off. So I got a pretty super sweet, awesome vacuum for way cheaper than one of the pretty cool Dyson cordless ones. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Check one thing off my list. I got a vacuum. Now I just have to get a desk and a dresser and I don't need to buy anything else ever, ever again. Which is good, because I'm, I'm a bad out of money. Thank God I don't have any pending legal fees for a divorce or anything like that. <sighs> and yet, I still miss the relationship when the music is right. What the hell is wrong with me? I think it's just evidence as to how recovering from something like that breakup, like, like it is a, it's an uphill trend. You know, but in that uphill trend, you still have up and down moments. I definitely do. I've had a whole lot of up moments lately. So the fact that I crashed a little today, like I'm not embarrassed, you know, it, it's, it is real, it is change. It is still heartbreaking to get broken up with and then left behind for somebody else who you don't understand why she thinks that person is so great. On low days, that still hurts. I can attribute it to all sorts of problems I think she has, but at the end of the day, it's still like your comparative mind, I compare him to me and I think, why was the idea of a relationship with him so powerful as to warrant blowing up the whole life with me and going through all this crap that we've been going through? You know, to watch them load his stuff into his truck and his trailer and drive away to, assumedly, a property they have purchased to start this life that they have planned. You know, you can't help but wonder, did they plan that life while she and I were together? Like, how long has the plan plan been in place? And I wonder all, all kinds of weird things, which I shouldn't, I should put them out of my head right now, but since I'm talking to you, since we're having this kind of day, I'll talk about it. Like when I take lessons, you know, your trainer sort of stands in the middle of the arena and tells you like, all right, go here, go do this, do this, get from that jump to that jump in this many strides. But when the dress dressage people take lessons, they wear like wireless headsets. So the trainer kind of sits in a chair near the arena and speaks into a microphone much more softly. And then the rider wears a receiver and earbuds. So I can imagine it's a much more intimate conversation. You just have somebody literally in your head. And I do wonder if in the course of her having lessons, if you have a, a crush on your trainer, which I'm assuming she did, or she had feelings for him, and then he was emotionally, like he was in her head. And then at lessons, like he wasn't physically in her head, just talking to her. I just wonder about that. And I shouldn't, but I do. Like what kind of intimacy came from that, from just him kind of like talking in her ear while she rode. 
Yeah, I guess it just, it sucks getting broken up with and not understanding the particulars of it, why you got left in the way you did when your relationship seemed to be so good. How's your day been going? What, what do you have going on? Sometimes it's lonely to just talk about my stuff and not hear about yours. But who knows, maybe the comments will become a, a forum for that. That could be fun. You know how sometimes when people drive like idiots, it like, the adrenaline like, their terribleness gets your adrenaline like fired up. That's what just happened. Like. He was so close on my bumper. I was like, like if I tapped the brakes, he would have hit me. And then he like did this close turn and then like, ah! Ugh. Men, am I right? Am I right, ladies? High five. The sky this evening is incredible. So I'm trying, uh, I may lose the light, but I'm trying to get back to the condo in enough time so I can set up a time lapse and use the new vacuum to clean the condo. I'm oddly really excited about the new vacuum. But oh, to the west, it is so dramatic. Like I, I hope the lights go in my favor because God, they're gorgeous. Oh, hold on, I'll just take a picture. Somebody from the past called me. Somebody that my wife and I had been very good friends with and then things fell apart or grew apart or somehow stopped and uh, and it always bothered me because it never made sense to me. But when you're in a marriage, you are teamed up with your spouse. I was on team, I was on my wife's team. But since my wife is no longer on my team, just a couple months ago, I reached out to this person and I said, hey, it's always felt weird and I still wonder about you guys and I hope you're okay and I care about you. It took a little bit of time, but she reached back and um, we had a really nice conversation today. It's been a couple years since we've spoken, and when you reconnect with somebody, particularly after a long time, there's some weird connections to make. Like babies have happened, and moving has happened, and job changes, and you know, from my perspective, she didn't know anything about this whole divorce thing. Like, you have to do the broad strokes connections before you can get into the nitty gritty, like, happy parts of it. And I think that's what this phone call was. It was just sort of like, hey, it's been a long time, and here's what my life looks like a little, here's what my life looks like a little, and you go back and forth and sort of trade things, and it was just nice. It was nice to talk with somebody else that I've known for seven and a half years at this point. I'm glad she called, and I'm glad we connected, and then she was so, so polite and kind that she texted a little while later and was like, hey, it was really nice talking to you today, and that was exactly my sentiment, but I felt I was a little unsure of if I should say anything or just like kind of let it settle for a little while, so... It is a little strange because, you know, I never really interacted with her except like through my wife. So, so the relationship was always wife based. And now I'm this like independent operative and it's weird because I, I know I'm not perfect. I'm not well, I'm kind of broken. So much of what I wanted to catch up with her on was surrounding the, the relationship breakup. Hey, I had some dinner. It was good. You get a lot of food for 11 bucks from the place in my building, so that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna bring up my TV stand now and get my stereo and turntable and stuff set up. Slowly make this place feel like home. It's going good. Hey, I just wanted to check in and say hi. I got my computer set up finally now that I have Wi-Fi and I've been ca catching up on episodes of Wrecked, which is, I mean, season one was a parody of Lost and then season two was good and now I'm into season three and I have been laughing my ass off. I've been li like lying on the couch back here. Um, look, there, there's the Warren Keelan prints right now. And it's, just, I don't know. I've just been laughing my ass off. It is a funny show and in season one, my wife and I just loved. We just laughed so hard at. It's a weird thing right now because if we were together, we would be laughing and it would be so funny. And I'm not sad. The thought of watching with her is sort of like, it'd be nice to do that, but I don't, I don't treat the situation as if it could ever possibly happen. I'm just enjoying entertaining the idea that had we had the opportunity to do it, it would have been okay. But I'm okay watching it by myself and laughing. So I guess, I guess that's progress. I guess that's good. Um, I'm gonna watch another episode and then maybe go to bed. You know, with each passing day, I feel a little bit more comfortable in this place and like, I'll be okay here. So uh, I hope your night is going really well or your day or whatever you might watch this and uh, I will see you soon. Okay, good night.